All right, Jacob Badsgard, you are the founder and CEO of Disruptive Advertising in uh, Linden, Utah, and uh, we both uh, share BYU as our alma mater. And so uh, you worked for Adobe for a while, uh, and then in 2012, but so but seven years ago, you started Disruptive. And so what what precipitated that? Yeah, I was I was working at uh, Omniture, later bought by Adobe, and and kind of helping Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies really understand how their digital marketing campaigns were producing. And I had no marketing background, but the data kept showing me the commonalities wow. and trends that were going on, and that's where I started to see the opportunity. Is that hey, if these if these big guys don't know how to track and use this information to be smart with their marketing dollars, what's everyone else in the marketing in the market oh, doing? Yeah, and so that's where I kind of saw my opportunity. So when you started, uh, was the market different than it is today? I mean, because it feels like today, like anybody and their sister can become um, a Facebook ads expert. And all of a sudden overnight, you know, they have all the secrets to unlocking, you know, untold riches in Facebook advertising. Yeah. You know, it's not that much different. There was a lot of that going on then as well. Yeah. There's just more of it now. Yeah. Uh, and so that's probably the biggest change that's happened there. And you know, the, the, the nice thing that I had going for me is that most people learned how to do this working on their, their uncle's business or with a really small budget. And so they think that mm -hmm. they know what's working, but they've never really worked at scale at volume or with enterprise companies or really back it up with good data. Um, and so that was kind of kind of the, the, the niche that I had for myself right out of the gate. And so how do you differentiate yourself then? And so for us, I mean, at this point, and, and what we always led with is we've now, we've got a software that's audited well over 3,000 companies' ad campaigns now. And what we found is that 76% of those budgets are completely wasted. And that doesn't assume that the other 24% is even profitable of the dollars that are being wow. spent. And so we have the ability to very quickly produce an audit that says, here's what's working, here's what's not, here's how we would redeploy, and this is the financial impact it could have for your business. And so wow. it's very, it's very data driven, not a lot of smoke and mirrors and hype and uh, emotion to try and close that cell. It's like, Hey, here's what's going on. And you can go fix it if you want, or if you want someone that knows what they're doing. And, and that's why companies hire us is they lack the bandwidth or expertise to really do this themselves. Uh, yeah. So I would imagine. So most like, let's say independent ads managers, um, I mean, they're just relying on the tools that, that Google or Facebook may be giving them. And, and I think what you're saying is that, well, I mean, if you really want to get, you know, the real story on this, you're going to need to dig a little bit deeper. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so what, 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 like, what would be an example of something that you can learn that, that current uh, just platform, you know, whether it's Facebook or Google or whoever it might be, like they're not really going to reveal that information. It's not accessible. Yeah. The, you know, it's, it, it comes back to the age old topic of attribution, right? Every platform gives, it, gives itself as much credit as possible. And so if you're in Google ads or if you're in Facebook, of course, it's going to try and demonstrate and take as much credit as possible for everything. And so one mm -hmm. of the things is to normalize data and to be able to look at performance from a variety of different angles of attribution models, what's really, what's working from a first click, a last click, somewhere in between, what's the buyer journey look like, so that we can actually see what's driving behavior and driving uh, purchases. So if I'm a business owner and, and we have a conversation, what does engagement look like? I mean, who do you work with? And, and uh, it, you know, would I get sticker shock if, if you said, well, we're gonna do this, but you know, this is what we cost. I mean, how, do you, how does that all look? Yeah, you know, we're, we're like anything, there's a bell curve for us. So mm -hmm. at the, the high end of the outside of the bell curve, we've got an enterprise division and we work with some of the largest brands in the country. Mm -hmm. And on the other end of the bell curve, we work with small businesses that fall yeah. within specific categories that we have more of a plug and play solution for. The vast are the, the majority, the 80% of the clients that we work with are already spending usually between about twenty to $50,000 a month in, in advertising budget on mm -hmm. Google or Facebook or a combination of both. And yeah. they just haven't been able to get the return they're looking for or find yeah. the way to scale beyond that. And, and lack the bandwidth or expertise to do so themselves. Maybe they've tried an agency or two. And that's typically where we just publish everything that we do. We don't have secrets. And so we yeah. have a great, 
you know, we have a great audience that follows our blog, consumes our content for free. And then a lot of the times people say, hey, looks like you know what you're doing here. And so that's, that's what we do. Uh, and, and so in terms of um, the value or how easy it is to win at, let's say, for example, with Facebook advertising, how has Facebook uh, evolved or changed over the past 12 months? You know, what's interesting, uh, the biggest change that I've seen is that good marketing is, is good marketing is good marketing. And mm -hmm. the, the, <laughs> the latest fashions or trends uh, tend to ebb and flow. And for a long time, we were seeing every company expected, we expect you to not only grow our revenue, we expect you to do so at a very specific ratio of dollars in cost to dollars in revenue. Mm -hmm. And it has to stay in that range. And so what happens is, and, and so it's often referred to as return on ad spend. Mm -hmm. And so it typically contradicts itself. And when you're focused on a return on ad spend, what most marketers will do is they start to eliminate, turn off or reduce the lower performing audiences or campaigns. Yeah. So that they can right. get that return on ad spend up. Well, what happens when they do that is now all of a sudden the retargeting starts to perform lower because there's less going yeah. into the funnel there's less direct and organic traffic coming through branded and those types of things because they've got less visibility. And so all of a sudden they're chasing this, really it's a, a conflicting goal. We have to hit this return on ad spend and we wanna grow. Mm -hmm. And by focusing on the return on ad spend, what we're finding is that a lot of clients are overly focused on that and slowly shooting themselves in the foot and, and hurting their top line growth. And then you know basic contribution yeah. margins fall into play, which is you've still got your fixed costs. Um, you've still got all these other things and we've got to hit volume goals in order for this to all work. And so that's what we've seen kind wow. of a shift back towards that is you're going to have campaigns and audiences that don't perform at the same level of return and that that can be a very appropriate approach in a marketing campaign that's addre addressing several different audiences at different buying stages in the process as well. And so that, that's what we've seen a shift kind of coming back that way with people better grasping, understanding, and, and moving in that direction versus we have to hit this return on ad spend or else it's not working. And so that's, that's kind of the shift that I've seen. And not that that's changed. That's actually what's always worked. Um, it's that people are now uh, more, it's, it's more common and people are more accepting of that. Now, I know you don't have the crystal ball from Menlo Park, but if you were to predict what we'll see out of Facebook for marketers over the next three years, what, what do, what's your prediction? <clears throat> I think, so, so my prediction coming from Facebook themselves or just in general with what's going to be effective on Facebook? Yeah, I mean, the effectiveness of Facebook advertising or how is it going to change for advertisers? Um, um, you know, I, I guess, is, is, is it ever going to become too expensive so that small businesses are going to get kind of priced out? I mean, I've heard some people uh, guess at that, but I don't know if that's your perception of that or not. So what I've seen in the maturation of any ad platform is uh, during that maturity cycle, the ability to target becomes more and more granular. So for those that are smaller, they can run a more targeted and specific campaign that doesn't have to produce as much volume. So that's what we've seen in Google, right? Like, because cost per clicks on Google in most industries have leveled out. Some of them, they're still increasing. Some of them, they're de decreasing, et cetera. But then within the platform, there's always a place for the small player because they can have a differentiated message to a very, very, very specific subset of an audience and still be able to compete with the big boys that are spending a lot of dollars on there. I see the same thing happening in Facebook now where a lot of the small companies can mm -hmm. approach it that way, where a lot of the large companies continue to treat it more like media buying and just looking for eyeballs. And so it still allows both to kind of accomplish what they're trying to get after. If, uh, let's say I was unable to advertise on Google or Facebook, um, are there any other platforms like Twitter? I mean, have you, have you ever gotten Twitter to work for anybody? I mean, is it, who would it work for? And in what case do you think? Yeah, so the, the situations, now again, understanding that 95% of, 98% of the budgets that we manage are on Google, Facebook, Instagram, right? Yeah. So that's what, that's what we do. And then for some of our larger B2B 
um, or uh, influencer B2C customers, Twitter still mm -hmm. has a place in that for them, but it's not typically yeah. a, a direct response driving an ROI. It's more of a no. uh, share of voice um, uh, in, in the market and understanding those things. And so that's where we've seen that to be effective, but the goals and objectives are very different. And yeah. that's also, you know, that's not our specialty. That's not what people are coming to us for. Right. Yeah. Um, so maybe just more of a visibility play. Oh, I, yeah. I'm not going to click on anything in Twitter, but I saw it. It's still maybe top of mind awareness, you know, just like, oh, I've seen it a few times. Um, Reddit is another one. It seems like, gosh, it's such a great platform, but I don't know that I've heard any success stories of anyone marketing through Reddit. And, and that seems like a tricky one. Yeah. And, you know, I think we've all read the articles of how to hack it and how to get things to go viral there and, and things like well, that. Well, yeah, organically. I mean, but not yeah. through their paid promoted uh, advertising program. C correct. And that's, and that's what we've seen is that there is hit or, mit, uh, hit or miss on the organic side. And then mm -hmm. on the paid side, again, that's just not an area that we've spent a lot of time or energy yeah. in because we haven't been able to find that consistent model that's repeatable. Yeah. How about YouTube? As of yet. Yeah. YouTube is actually a, a fantastic channel that's also run through the Google yeah. ad platform. Right. And, and we've found that to be very effective from a variety of uh, angles. Number one, I think everyone should advertise on YouTube uh, that's yeah. doing digital advertising from a retargeting standpoint, if nothing else. Mm. Because if you've already done the legwork to get them to your site or to interact with your brand in, in a way that you can now pixel them, uh, staying in front of them in a very inexpensive manner on YouTube and having a media uh, platform that you can better present educational, inspirational, and entertaining creative is yeah. it's inexpensive and you can take advantage of that audience that you've already worked so hard to build up uh, to get them to your website in the first place. Mm, mm, interesting. Uh, well, good. And so um, if let's say that there's a small business and um, like, t t you know, maybe they're a little risk averse and they go, well, Jacob, you know, how can, you know, what's the best way for us to start if, let's say we want to spend like a thousand, two thousand dollars. I mean, is that something, should they hire an agency for that? If so, is, is that something that Disruptive would do? Or like, wh how would you recommend they get started if, again, they say, listen, I'll spend the money, but I, I don't think we could stomach, you know, gambling, you know, five to ten thousand dollars in a month. But I'll, 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 I'll try it out at lower levels. What, what would you think make, would make best sense for them? Yeah, so my answer would depend on the industry that they're in. Mm -hmm. Because in some industries, for example, a dentist's office can spend one or two grand a month and actually get a pretty good amount of patients through that, mm -hmm. you know, coming mm -hmm. into practice. Uh, if, I, if a law firm came and said, hey, if I spend a grand a month with that work, oh, like, yeah. that'll get you like 10, they'll get like 10 clicks to your website. Right, um, right. And so that really is going to depend by industry, which is where I would actually say to start is any business, it's just worth making sure that your website is, is, is technically structured appropriately mm -hmm. to be indexed by Google well for SEO mm -hmm. and organic purposes, that you get your Google My Business filled out and filled out well, yeah, and that you work on getting some reviews on social media, on Google, on some other areas that are relevant. And to me, once those things are in place, you actually are going to be more successful with any paid ads that you run at that point. So that's where yeah. I would start as a foundation, because if you don't have a reputation online, if you have no social proof or credibility and you start right. running paid ads, the effectiveness is just going to be a lot less. So that's where I would start. Yeah, that's a matter of fact, that's what we, uh, that's our service. <laughs> so, you know, we, we believe that, you know, if you look at consumer behavior and I've studied and kind of led it for 12 years you know, you look at consumers are more skeptical than ever before, and they'll, they're will they not afraid to do their due diligence uh, before they engage. Uh, and so I think it's really important to make sure that, yeah, you know, your social media profiles look good, your, you know, social proof is always really great, you know, uh, authority through associations or success or your branding is on point, like all that stuff is going to really make a big difference in terms of ROI. Uh, so that's, that's what we kind of do. So, uh, so I'm curious, so for a company like in MySpace, so, um, you know, obviously we do a lot of media placements. We're really successful at that. Um, you know, I've got a strong personal brand along with that. We've got some decent social proof. Um, influencer, 
uh, engagement. We do a lot of that. Um, I, I haven't really had any success, haven't had much success historically with Facebook. Um, you know, our B2B marketing through LinkedIn is bonkers uh, compared to uh, other stuff. But where do you think the, the, you know, aside from what we're already doing, like you would say, you might want to, you know, uh, wh where would you lead me to, I guess, first in, in, in our industry? You know, it's interesting. We actually have found that Facebook, uh, you can get a pretty well targeted audience similar to LinkedIn at substantially lower cost per click. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so typically that's very common for me to hear in the B2B space that it's like, Hey, we've spent yeah. money on Facebook and we don't get anything out of it. Yeah. Um, and so why are we, or the, or the quality there? is re our problem is that the quality just seemed really poor because people didn't have the opportunity to engage and, and, and kind of experience our authority. Um, and maybe our funnel wasn't designed very well to, to uh, maybe invest in the relationship uh, first. Um, right. But, and I think what we were doing is Facebook ad directly into lead capture this people really just didn't have enough time to get to know us. So like if I was talking with them on a the phone, they're like, all right, what are you selling? <laughs> I was like, I, mean, I just, I'm not going to do calls like that. <laughs> you know, and, and so here's, if I were to go through a progression yeah. of how any B2B brand would leverage Facebook to be successful. Mm -hmm. And when I say Facebook, I'm also implying Instagram because both platforms are run through the, through there. Yeah. Um, Retargeting is right where I, I go back to because retargeting, the, you can never spend too much on retargeting. So long as your wow. audiences and your frequencies are set up correctly, yeah, um, then you'll be good to go and you can just maximize anything else that you're doing. You can upload your, your customer lists, your prospective lists that have opted in. You can target them specifically as well as just anyone that you've pixeled that's interacted with your ads or gone to your website. Mm -hmm. Um, it's hard to spend too much there. And that's how you can continue to warm up perspective or keep warm existing customers, right? And yeah. it'll get them to buy more or introduce them to a new principle or concept. Retargeting and, and so is these always would be people, there. And these would be people, they visited the website, they got pixeled, you had the, you had the Facebook pixel embedded uh, on the site. And now you just kind of follow them around and stay top of mind. Uh, kind of like what I see with disruptive advertising because I visited your yeah. website a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so not only that, but then we actually upload all of our customers into Facebook and we push ads that say, thanks for being a customer. We love working with you. Yeah. Right. And they never even click on them. So like, it doesn't even cost us anything because we're running. Wow. <laughs> and so, so there's free lot display that, advertising. Yeah. There's a lot that you can do with that. Um, the second thing that we do, because we tier our budgets on, on Facebook, and we actually have a lot of success from it, is we uh -huh. promote content. Content uh, yeah. truly to help and benefit our, our, the audience and the industry, and that we promote to those that would be more of our ideal customers to just demonstrate, hey, we know what we're doing. Well, guess what? When they see that it's just a blog post that they just get to go and read and they don't have to opt into anything, they don't have to right. do anything. Well, guess what? They're now cookied and I get to retarget them and continue to give them a message based on those that clicked through, demonstrated some interest, retarget, drive them back to something else. Um, so that's where we start with our budgets. And then through that effort, we've actually then been able to narrow down some specific audiences that we actually can run direct response uh, lead generation campaigns and have them produce at, at a good rate. Quality is never quite the same because that's not what people are going on Facebook to do is I'm on Facebook to make a B2B purchase. Mm -hmm. um, that right. doesn't happen. However, those are the steps that we, that I recommend companies go through to get the most value from those social media platforms. And that it is possible to have a section of that budget producing direct response leads that turn into sales at yeah. have good enough quality. Yeah. So Jacob, um, what's a great way for people to kind of get to know disruptive or, you know, producing, is there great content that you'd recommend? Um, you know, what would be like a great first step, uh, and begin, maybe they're not, maybe not necessarily ready for your services. They, they'd love to get to know you. What, what would you recommend that first step to be with, with disruptive? Yeah, we, we've got a very popular blog. We have a couple hundred thousand people a month that, that read the content. We publish everything we do there. Um, mm -hmm and how we do it. And so for those that are interested in learning for themselves and making it happen, uh, just go to disruptiveadvertising.com, go to the blog, sign up. You'll get newsletters that tell you 
the, the weekly rundown of what we've published. And, mm -hmm. um, and that would be the easiest way uh, to become familiar yeah. with us, how we do what we do and uh, do it yourself or, you know, that that's okay. Yeah. So just kind of uh, browsing some of the uh, headlines of, I mean, you're producing a lot of content. It looks like, you know, uh, looks like about three to four po uh, posts every single week, Facebook groups, should your business have one 12 fast email copywriting tips that will boost your conversion rates. Um, yeah, a lot of good stuff here. Yeah, we produce a lot. We've published over a thousand posts at this point. That's at disruptiveadvertising.com slash blog. So, well, cool. Well, well, Jacob Badsgard, and by the way, Badsgard, where, where, if you do your family history back, where does that lead you to? Uh, Denmark. Ah, okay. Yep. It seems yeah. very Scandinavian. Well, good deal. Where you're the uh, founder and CEO of Disruptive Advertising. Of course, we gave the uh, website address disruptiveadvertising.com and do check out the blog. There's a lot of good content here. Again, that's a disruptiveadvertising.com slash blog. Jacob, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Josh.